Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. We're going to be looking today at the state of the camcorder market uh, with an emphasis on pro camcorders as it exists at the time I'm recording this video, which is the 20th of August, 2022. Now I've done quite a number of videos about camcorders on this YouTube channel. I started out with the Canon Vixia HF R800, which was actually the first camera I bought. And about four to five months ago, I upgraded to a professional quality camcorder. I own the Canon XA40 and I absolutely love it. My only criticism is that the low light performance is uh, not brilliant and that's because it's a 1 over 2.3 CMOS sensor but uh, if you can afford a, a full 1 in sensor go for the Canon XA50 and I love camcorders. Um, I'm one of a minority of folks on YouTube who uh, will sing their praises uh, for hours if, uh, if, if given the opportunity. So I thought in this video I would do a kind of synopsis of based on what's on bnh.com at the moment of who is making these things uh, in 2022, late 2022, going into fall here. And what is what is it that distinguishes camcorders from a couple of other adjacent product classes? So all this video is going to consist of is me going through bnh.com. So could, could, could you do this yourself? You could. Uh, but um, <laughs> if you want to let me do the clicking, uh, join along for the adventure. So um, something I really like about the way B&H do things is that they divide everything up into pro and consumer. And there's definitely kind of a hard uh, gap between those two markets when it comes to camcorders. Consumer camcorders, I would say, are even more are potentially the dying product category because, you know, if you ask who still uses camcorders, well, they're still very much industry standard in broadcast journalism, ENG camcorders. And we'll look at a couple of those. ENG, for those who haven't heard the term, stands for electronic news gathering. And basically that's your really, really big camcorder. They have a, they have a name and that's the top end of the pro uh, camcorder market. But looking at the consumer video video camera market as B&H organizes this, so I've gone into the camcorder category and then gone into consumer and look how small it is. And this is something about camcorders that I think if you're in, if you've decided to go down this route as opposed to DSLR and mirrorless is actually an advantage. Yes, you heard that right. There's nothing worse when you need something basic like a loaf of bread or milk than going into a supermarket and having 200 different options. And it, it's quite interesting if we compare and I've uh, opened up these uh, pages in preparation. The narrow size of the modern camcorder market versus it's more glamorous DSLR and mirrorless because if you type into YouTube now uh, you know best YouTube camera for 2022 and the next year 2023 I promise you 80 to 90 percent is going to be recommending DSLR and mirrorless cameras and even if you go out and you see other people shooting videos in the field you're probably going to see folks with DSLR and mirrorless it's become more popular have a quick look at the numbers because I find this very interesting Within the consumer video camera market in B&H, we have only 24 options. That sounds very small. DSLR, 106 options. Mirrorless, 447 options. Now, I'm using um, B&H here kind of as just a proxy for the general market. I realize that they don't have every mirrorless DSLR and camcorder in stock, but as a pretty well-respected industry website i think this is probably pretty pretty representative so it's a really small market so within the consumer camcorder market in terms of the brands we have out there which is listed up here at the top i'm going to put myself out of the way for a moment we have canon hamilton buhl jvc and panasonic now and sony so i would say these are the main camcorder brands uh, because these are the ones you're also seeing dominating the pro camcorder category. Again, Canon, JVC, Panasonic, and Sony, and that's only four. Now, of course, that's not the; those aren't the only uh, companies in the world who are still making camcorders, but they dominate. So within the uh, consumer video camera market, now what's the difference between, I'm going to go through a few product categories uh, today. What's the difference between a consumer camcorder and a pro camcorder. So basically it boils down to, uh, I would say form factor. Now the truth is there's no hard and fast uh, definition. So some folks would consider a pro camcorder probably not pro enough for their use cases. I'm just gonna tighten up this uh, microphone stand here. 
And others would consider, you know, a consumer camcorder good enough to shoot pro video on. But it typically boils down to form factor. So if you take a look at these form factors for the consumer camcorders, I don't like, I, I hope that the, the term soccer mom isn't demeaning to anyone, but that's kind of what these get called. Or, you know, uncle at a barbecue, if you want the male equivalent, that kind of a thing. It's a uh, body that has a flip out LCD built in monitor screen. And that's all it have. It, it often doesn't even have capability to take an external microphone but if it does it's probably going to be a 3.5 mil jack now if we graduate up to the professional camcorder market have a look this is quite interesting one you can see one 230 of 62 so we have in being h at the time i'm recording this video 62 pro camcorders and 24 consumer camcorders so that means that the, the as the camcorder market contracts we're seeing most contraction actually at the consumer camcorder level because there's still strong industry demand for pro camcorders so if anything's going to become obsolete and this is always a question are camcorders dying whatever i would say if anything's going to die it's going to be the consumer ones i don't see the pro camcorders dying because they're just so great for shooting on and so beloved by uh people working in broadcast media who use these things day in day out now if you go into the pro professional camcorder market we are seeing pretty much the same brands actually it's an even smaller list and we have the big four if you want to call them that here again along with black magic so we have canon jvc panasonic sony now i'm interested to see what they're classifying as camcorders so Blackmagic have these guys as well as I thought it was going to be the uh, Blackmagic uh, compact uh, pocket cinema uh, camera, whatever it's called. So in terms of your options here um, today, if there is a filter here for 4K and b and you can choose uh, 1080p capable or 4K. So I'm going to click on 4K and I'm going to uh, click on... Uh, actually i'm not going to click on in stock so these are the options so the cheapest 4k capable camcorder is actually the number the camcorder i own and it's listed as the number one seller on bnh it's the canon xa40 now let me just show you guys the kind of gap here between entry-level compact pro camcorders which is what i'd consider the Canon XA40 and ENG camcorders. Now, just as there's no real kind of official difference between consumer and pro camcorder, other than features you expect on a pro camcorder, which would be XLR audio input, time code, uh, SDI output for those using them in broadcasting, I don't think, to the best of my knowledge, there's any hard and fast um, delineator between uh, you know entry level pro camcorders and ENG suitable camcorders, but the 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 gap in price is quite huge. You're going to go from starting here at the bottom of the 4K capable pro camcorder market, starting at about sixteen hundred dollars. We're going to see these jump all the way up to twenty thousand dollars for really big ENG. So that's a very sizable difference, of course. Now, who's making these? So you've got some options from Canon. Canon have two series in the pro camcorder world and i know the canon range and not the others as well the xa series and the xf series so you can see this the canon xf 605 is sort of the top of its uh pro camcorder offering here and that guy clocks in at four thousand seven hundred bucks so we're getting up to 5k but in exchange for more money uh, we're getting a really big form factor and we're getting that one inch cmos sensor as opposed to the one over 2.3 that in camcorder world has often been industry standard. Now, some other ones um, I actually was considering, I, this was a little bit out of my budget, but I like the look of this Panasonic uh, because it's a 4K camcorder. And unlike the other ones, it actually comes with a built-in shotgun microphone. I think, I don't think this is just uh, showing, um, I'm actually not 100% sure about that, but uh, um, it, you know, that's what it is. So more Canons more jvcs and then black magic so now i just want to talk a little bit about categories here and i'm going to skip over dslr mirrorless and just talk about one interesting division and that is what is the difference between a digital cinema camera and a camcorder now the best known digital cinema camera for folks who don't have hollywood budgets is this one the black magic uh, pocket cinema camera commonly called the uh, BPCC this is the 4k they've also got a 6k one and someone on the videography subreddit uh, I described these and I thought it was a perfect description as a sensor in a box 
These guys are basically the sensor and you need to bring everything else, including the lens. Versus in the camcorder world, it's not true that all camcorders have fixed lens, but the majority of them do. Because when we get up to the very top of this market, we're going to see options like, uh, like this one, in fact, uh, that aren't going to come with a lens and they're interchangeable lens. But typically for most camcorders, like this Panasonic, the best, they have a fixed lens with a very, very um, wide focal range covered in it. And the best you can do is add add-on adapters if you want to get UV filters or, N or ND filters or uh, ex you know um, ultra-wide filters so they fit onto the lens, but they're not actually lenses lenses themselves so that's the main distinction there so you know and you know going for something like this because the pocket cinema camera would tend to be used more for cinema making cinematography versus news gathering or documentary gathering the beautiful the beauty of camcorders is in the form factor they tend to have buttons within physical reach as opposed to within a menus and they're just designed to be uh, great for run and gun like the xa40 you put a shotgun in there and everything it's all in one package make sure it's charged make sure you've got battery you're good to go versus the black magic you need your lens you need your you need you need some kind of cage around it to put a microphone on so the, this is much more modular and uh, they're actually more expensive if you look at the cost of something like the black magic pocket cinema camera by the time you add on your lens or your lenses I did the numbers, it's gonna end up costing you more than uh, most of these camcorder options. So I'm just gonna jump quickly because this is pretty, I've covered pretty much all I wanted to say about where the market, how the market looks today. Um, just wanna show you guys, in fact, let's actually filter from um, high to low so I can show you guys some ENG camcorder. So this is an example here, this is the Sony PXW Z750 and it's a shoulder mount broadcast camcorder. So that's kind of another way of saying ENG, right? They're, they're big guys, they're designed to be carried on your shoulder. Um, here's another one and then again the point I made before that not all camcorders um, have actually a lens on them. Perfect example here being the Sony P xw z450 4k shoulder mount has the sensor but you need to bring the lens and look at the price of this bad boy twenty five thousand dollars so uh there is actually a lot of range in the camcorder pricing we're still seeing eng camcorders at this price point um including maybe this arguably the xf705 uh, at seven thousand dollars and the Sony uh, XD cam, I would say it definitely qualifies as a ENG camcorder. That's at $7,000. Likewise, this Canon, you can see they're just bigger, shoulder mount, that kind of a thing. But then as we drop down in price to $3,000, $2,000, we start getting into these. And I wouldn't even call these, they're definitely still pro camcorders. You could use them for ENG, absolutely. Um, but they might be used by kind of, you know, college TV stations and rookie journalists and YouTubers versus professional broadcast media channels which are likely to have the budgets to go for these very expensive camcorders that have literally everything under the sun built into them i hope that overview of the market was useful the summary to answer the question on the title of this video who's still making camcorders in 2022 mostly the big four of canon jvc panasonic and sony it's definitely still a market but it's a smaller market in many respects than the dslr and mirrorless and within the within that contraction, there is um, actually more pro camcorder uh, options on the market today versus consumer, at least if B&H's current selection is anything to go by. Hope this video is interesting. If you're also a, a camcorder fan looking at your purchasing options, thank you guys for watching. And if you wanna get more videos from me about videography, camcorders, and other topics, do please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.